In a psychiatric hospital, a doctor is trying to communicate with a girl patient named Sumi. Sumi always sits with her hair covering her face and doesn't say a word. When the doctor asks what has happened to her family, she looks up with a sad expression on her face. That day, Sumi can go home and finally arrive, along with her father and her little sister named Suyan. The two enjoy some time outside, until father calls them to come home. The house is quite old and made of wood with many sliding glass doors. When they enter the house, a woman suddenly appears to welcome the two of them. The woman is their stepmother named Yunyo. Sumi and Suyan don't seem to like her and even Suyan is so scared when she wants to get close to her. The two of them ignore her words, leave her, and then go to their room on the top floor. When she gets to her room, Sumi's eyes fall on the wardrobe there. Sumi is surprised upon opening it, finding clothes with the same color and pattern. It's as if she is not allowed to wear clothes with other colors and patterns. Shortly after, the family eats in the dining room in silence. Stepmother who is feeling the silence tries to strike up a conversation to lighten the mood, saying that her brother and his wife are coming over this weekend. However, no one seemed interested in what she said and father even finished eating and left. Feeling gloomy, stepmother scolds Sumi to care more about the house, but she reprimands her for messing with her bedroom stuff instead. When she wants to reply to Sumi's words, her husband comes again and gives her some pills. Due to the fight, Sumi suddenly has no appetite and leaves. The innocent Suyan is kicked out by stepmother too. As they walk to their room, Sumi asks her sister to tell her should stepmother ever bother her, so she will defend her. In the evening, father doesn't sleep with his young wife and chooses to sleep on a couch instead. When everyone is asleep, someone opens Suyan's room. The timid Suyan can only cover herself with the blanket and close her eyes. Suddenly, the blanket is gently pulled by someone from below and her room door suddenly slams by itself. Suyan is getting scared, so she runs to her sister's room and tells her that someone has entered her room. Hearing that, Sumi decides to go downstairs to check it out. She sees the television is on with static, even though no one is watching it. She also sees father sleeping on the couch and fixes father's blanket. Surprisingly, stepmother appears and accuses her of trying to wake father up. Sumi reasons with her, and sees stepmother watching the TV when she is about to go upstairs. Sumi feels scared and returns to her room, and tells Suyan that it is stepmother who has entered her room. Sumi senses that there is something strange about stepmother as well as the house. Hearing that makes Suyan even more afraid as she hugs her sister tightly. The next morning, Sumi seems restless in her sleep because she's been plagued by nightmares about a little girl covered in blood running in fear of being chased by a woman. Sumi wakes up from her dream, but she sees a woman dressed in black and long hair, with her head bent to the side. The figure suddenly stands up and hovers, then slowly approaches the frightened Sumi. When she is very close, the figure is oozing blood and hands from inside her crotch, but Sumi wakes up again from her sleep which turns out to be just a dream in another dream. Upon waking up, father goes to Sumi's room and calls them to come downstairs for breakfast. When Sumi opens the curtains, she sees a drop of blood lying on the bed and thinks that Suyan is on her period. Therefore, she takes some sanitary pads from stepmother's room. When she wants to leave, she is caught by stepmother and asked what she is going to do. Sumi simply replies that Suyan is only menstruating. Hearing this, stepmother says this is very funny because they have their periods at the same time. Sumi ignores stepmother and goes to clean the blood-stained bed sheet. They wash and dry the sheets in the yard. On a sunny morning, these two sisters are sitting casually, cutely whistling their biological mother's favorite song. While they are enjoying the time, suddenly father comes and talks to Sumi. Sumi tells father to get rid of Suyan's wardrobe, but father refuses the idea. Mysteriously, father says that they have agreed not to talk about it anymore. Sumi and father's relationship looks very cold as they have a lot of disagreements. Meanwhile, Suyan sees stepmother's pet bird and opens the birdcage, and falls silent for a moment. At the same time, Sumi is walking in the woods near their house and stumbles across an abandoned hut. She takes two luggage bags and takes them home. Then, she opens the bag which contained her late mother's belongings and old photos. Seeing that, she also reminisces about the good times she had with her mother and father. Suyan's expression suddenly changes when she sees stepmother who has been in the midst of her family for a long time. Not long after, Suyan comes and they look at their mother's belongings together. The overjoyed Suyan asks permission to pick up some of her mother's stuff. However, Sumi's face changes when she sees Suyan's bruised hand and asks her who does this. The timid Suyan doesn't dare to say anything, that's why Sumi forces her to tell the truth while shaking her body. Because of that, Suyan screams and leaves her. After that, Sumi is sitting in front of stepmother looking at her sharply and asking her why she has the heart to take father from her mother. Stepmother casually replies that it is a reward for a negligent person such as Sumi's mother. Sumi gets even angrier and throws the dish on the dining table. Father sees Sumi crying in the corner. He wants to calm her down, but it only makes things worse. 
Then, she stands up and leaves father. However, father chases after her and pulls her hand, but Sumi is very disappointed in him for marrying stepmother. Father still tries to communicate with her about all these misunderstandings. But still, she doesn't want to talk to him anymore. The day finally arrives, stepmother's brother comes to their house and they eat together. The situation seems awkward because none of them make a sound other than stepmother. When she recounts her funny experiences with her brother, no one laughs or responds, instead, she gets a strange look from everyone. In addition, her brother doesn't even remember what she's talking about, and it makes her very upset. Suddenly the brother's wife coughs and falls to the floor. She is thrashing and screaming as if she is possessed by a demon. The men try to calm her down, but she keeps on rebelling. They try to give her medicine and water but to no avail and even more, she vomits. With her head upturned, she looks at stepmother who just stands still looking at her and then screams hysterically. After the incident, the two say goodbye and finally go home. On the way home, the wife tells her husband that she saw a girl under the dishwasher when she was having the seizure. Back in the house, stepmother is still in shock, and suddenly she sees the dishwasher door opens by itself. Out of curiosity, she walks over to it and looks down, but she doesn't find anything strange. But without realizing it, there is a woman dressed in green with long hair sitting on the table. When the feeling is getting eerie, she looks at the dining table but the woman has already disappeared. Out of nowhere, there is a hairpin on the floor. With her confusion, she picks it up, and suddenly there is a hand holding her hand until she is very surprised and turns around. She is even more surprised to see the figure appear right in front of her. After that, she is in her room and her husband gives her some pills to calm her. With her pale face, stepmother says that strange things have been happening since Sumi is here. Her husband simply replies casually and says, she should just rest and he will check around the house. After he leaves the room, he goes around and finds that his wife's favorite bird is dead. Seeing this, he moves it but his wife is watching him from the window. Annoyed, stepmother goes to Suyan's room but the door is locked. She has a spare key to open the door and she finds Suyan fall asleep. Suddenly, her attention is drawn to the blanket that seems to stick out. She opens Suyan's blanket and finds the bird's carcass. Seeing this, she gets even more annoyed and vents her frustration by hitting Suyan. She drags and locks her in the wardrobe, also throwing her mother's pictures into it. Suyan, locked in the wardrobe, can only scream hysterically while banging on it. However, stepmother doesn't care, instead telling Suyan to apologize first before letting her out. Suyan gets scared and ends up apologizing to her, but stepmother persists in keeping Suyan in her wardrobe without anyone knowing. On the other hand, Sumi wakes up from her sleep when she hears a photo frame falling. Feeling something is wrong, she runs to her sister's room. Sumi is shocked when she sees Suyan's room is very messy but Suyan is not there. Then, her gaze turns to the wardrobe. Out of curiosity, she opens it and Suyan is crying in fear. Seeing this, Sumi immediately hugs her tightly and pulls her out of there. While in the yard, father is burying the bird's carcass, but suddenly he sees that someone is watching him from behind the window. Confused, he walks up to Suyan's room and asks for an explanation of all this. Sumi is frustrated because father doesn't know anything. Hearing Sumi's words, father is even more confused and continues to wonder what happened. Finally, Sumi tells him that his wife has always tortured Suyan. She also locks Suyan in the wardrobe, but father doesn't believe her. To get father to believe her, Sumi tells Suyan to explain it herself, but she just keeps quiet. Eventually, father snaps at Sumi and tells her to shut up because Suyan is dead, and she has to accept this fact. Hearing this, Suyan, who is standing there, can only cry and scream hysterically. The next day, stepmother is busy pulling a sack with blood all over. Very cruelly, she takes a crowbar and hits the sack repeatedly, but it turns out that this is only Sumi's dream. Sumi wakes up and goes to Suyan's room, but Suyan's door has been nailed. Sumi runs again when she hears Suyan calling her. As she is running, she sees bloodstains on the floor like something has been dragged out. Sumi follows the blood trail and finds a large sack filled with blood, just like the one she just dreamt about. Sumi thinks that it must be Suyan and she decides to untie the sack. Due to her panic, she has a hard time untying the tight knots. Then, she looks for something to help her in the kitchen. However, she doesn't find any sharp objects, and she hears the water boiling in the kettle. While still searching, for a split second she sees a vision of herself hitting the sack repeatedly. She comes but the sack has now disappeared. The confused Sumi follows the blood trail and finds that the sack is now in the wardrobe. When Sumi holds it, the sack seems to move on its own and that surprises her. Stepmother hears the kettle ringing and goes to the kitchen to plan something evil. When Sumi keeps trying to open the sack, suddenly stepmother is behind her carrying the kettle. She aims to throw the hot water at Sumi, luckily Sumi can fend it off with the wardrobe door. Stepmother gets even more annoyed that she finally attacks Sumi with her bare hands. However, Sumi finds a pair of scissors and sticks it into her hand. 
The fight escalates and when Sumi tries to run away, stepmother manages to hold her back and she falls, bumping her head on the table. Stepmother drags the helpless Sumi out. Stepmother says that Sumi wants to get rid of all the painful memories but she never can, because Suyan continues to follow her like a ghost. Stepmother also says that she will help her end all this. She lifts a large cement statue to smash it into Sumi who is lying weak. When she is ready, she is stopped by father's arrival. Later, father returns home to find Sumi sprawled on the floor with fragments of the statue splattered beside her. Seeing this, Sumi is brought to the couch and he sees that there is blood on her hand. When he looks at the messy state of his house, he feels something strange. He sees a doll tied up in the sack that is stored in the wardrobe. After that, he returns to his wife and gives her some medicine to calm down and leave. Not long after, his wife is surprised when seeing a person wearing a suit approaching her. Surprisingly, she is herself, and the person in front of her calls her Sumi. The apparition of the stepmother who is sitting, turns out to be Sumi herself. So all this time, Sumi is the one hallucinating and doing all the silly things. The reality that happened is, she was the one beating the sack containing the doll, she was also the one who broke the bird's neck, and she was also the one who had been taking medications. When she first got home, she was all alone. Suyan's existence is never there from the start because she is already dead. Because of all these things, Sumi is finally returned to the psychiatric hospital. There, stepmother visits her and comforts her, before finally standing up to say goodbye. Sumi is silent without a word, suddenly gripping stepmother's hand tightly. Stepmother becomes panicked, she forcibly removes her hand and leaves. When Sumi is alone, she only sheds tears and remembers all the memories with her sister who got rough treatment when stepmother was present in their family. Arriving at home, stepmother hears the sound of the door slamming upstairs. Out of curiosity, she checks it and instantly feels like there is something behind the curtains. She also ventures to open the curtains but finds nothing there. The atmosphere becomes even more tense when the bedroom door suddenly closes and the lights begin to short circuit. The wardrobe also suddenly opens and something is tucked between the folds. When she pulls it, a female figure crawls out. At the end of the story, it is recounted that the girl's biological mother had committed suicide in Suyan's wardrobe because father cheated on her. Father cheated with the nurse who took care of their late ailing mother, who now becomes their stepmother. Suyan was the first to discover her mother's corpse. Panicked, she pulled her mother down but the wardrobe fell on her. Hearing the loud voice, stepmother approached her but instead of helping her, she left. Halfway through, she changed her mind and walked back to Suyan's room. However, she crossed paths with Sumi and Sumi expressed her dislike for stepmother and told her to leave their lives. Stepmother was annoyed and said that Sumi would regret this moment. Sumi, who didn't care about stepmother's words, chose to leave without knowing the fate of her dying sister under the heavy wardrobe and her dead mother. Besides, Suyan kept calling out Sumi's name for help. Because she was so helpless, she ended up dead. And this was where stepmother's words mean that Sumi would regret this moment. Therefore, the incident made Sumi depressed, and finally, she is in the psychiatric hospital. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.